being 6.30, call this meeting to order. Uh, I'll call a roll. Um, Mr. Toole? Here. Renee? Here for Brad. Jack? Here. I'm also here. Uh, Mr. Flaherty called or texted me that he didn't realize we were meeting tonight and will not be able to make it tonight. He has a business, business uh, meeting he has to attend. Uh, so the record will show four present, and also present is town manager Michael Units. Um, first order of business is appointments and resignations. The first uh, appointment is to vote to approve the request of Michael G. Uh, Bernier for the appointment to the Norton Cultural Council. Everybody has a letter from him in their packet. Anyone has any questions or comments? Uh, and if not, Chair would entertain a motion to approve Michael G. Bernier to the uh, Norton Cultural Council. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. Let's have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, uh, Mike? Yay. Uh, Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, second order of business is an approval of reappointments to boards and committees. Everyone should have gotten a uh, Excel spreadsheet like with all the uh, appointments that expired in 2020. And as we've done in the past, on the uh, far right, there's a column of yes and no's, and they, the uh, town hall, reaches out to people whose uh, terms are expiring to find out if they want to be reappointed or not. And that's where the uh, yes and no columns would, uh, why they're there. So um, we should probably take them by committee. And I see that we have two members of the alternate transportation committee who are up for reappointment. Um, Sandra Ohead and uh, Linda Collette, and she would entertain a motion to reappoint those two members. Move. Brad? Yes. Um, can you give me just a minute? Because I, I can't get the packet to turn and it's all together. They're not separate tonight. I just, I, I want to be able to actually see the spreadsheet. I'll hold mine up. Can you say it? <laughs> I don't think that's going to work quite right. <laughs> Are you able to ro rotate it? I have to download it first. Sing it, Jack, sing it. Sorry, no obsession. <laughs> it's coming. Give me a sec. I just thought had to do the same exact thing. Same boat. And unfortunately, it, it rotates the entire packet. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, Brad. I have it now. You're on the Al Alternative Transportation Committee? Correct. And both uh, the members whose terms expired indicated they uh, would uh, entertain reappointment by the uh, X's in the yes column on the right. Okay, did, you had a motion? Did you need a second? I, I believe we have a motion in the second, but I'm not. I'm not let's, sure. just, yeah. let's do it again. If I can have a motion to reappoint Sandra Ohead and uh, Linda Collette. Oh. And do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Oh, uh, Mike? Uh -huh. Uh, yay. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, the next one is Board of Health. Uh, William Hebbard. 
at Bard. Uh, and he's the only one on the Board of Health. So, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to appoint, reappoint William Abad uh, to the Board of Health. I'm sorry, my sound's breaking up. Did I have a motion in a second? Yes, Jack, okay. I, didn't, I didn't hear the motion. Oh, yes, uh, so moved. Okay. And there was a second, I believe. Yeah, I think Michael seconded it. Okay. So there's there's some sort of, uh, somebody's outside, we're hearing wind. Yeah, and it's, it's very distracting and making it very difficult to hear. Uh, whoever's outside, please mute your phone. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, so we'll go to the vote. Mike? Yes. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I vo also vote yes. On the uh, so, hey, board of hey, Brad? Yes. I'm sorry, can, can I just ask? There are a lot of, um, there are a lot of groups here, and since we have to do roll call, can we bucket some of them or review them first and then vote on them at the end? As far as I'm concerned, as long I, I, I'll, we can do them all if you, I mean, you know, do like the whole thing and just reappoint uh, the incumbents as listed. I mean, I'm fine reading each one, like just to know, like the board of registrar, registers, um, it's, I don't know what hold means. What does hold mean? I think that while it says hold, because we reach out to find out they want to be reappointed, after we have a, a letter from uh, Lushka saying that um, this particular person wants to be reappointed. It says that she's done uh, an extremely, she has been an extreme asset to the town court department, and therefore I am requesting that she be reappointed for another three term, three year term. So I assume that the letter overrides the hold. I think they were waiting for for her to reach out to someone. So I'm going to indicate that we'll reappoint them. And if, I, if I've if i messed up, we can always correct it at a later, later date. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, so uh, the Board of Registrars, it'd be Miriam Parving for a three-year term. Um, Ms. To try to the cemetery commission be uh, Joseph Oliveri. Uh, let's see for the commission on disability. Uh, Michael Young on the conservation commission. It'd be Daniel Doyle Jr. Um, on the conservation. Committee also would be Daniel uh, Pearson, and also on the Conservation Commission, Ronald O'Reilly. On the Council on Aging, it'd be Robin Lovering, uh, Loving, Lovering um, Marianne Dempsey. and um, Kathleen Eno. <laughs> Why don't we go there only because I've got a break in it. And I'm trying to keep track on this. So Chair would entertain a motion to reappoint those people to the uh, boards as mentioned. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Michael? Hey. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I will also vote yes. Okay. okay. Would you like me to read? Yes. I haven't pulled up in there. I can make them larger. That, 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 that'd be great because I'm straining my eyes here. All right. Uh, for the Historic District Commission, we have uh, Ruth Gould and Nancy Federici. 
for the Historical Commission, we have Daniel Rich. For the, uh, I believe now, Economic Development Commission, we have Laura Parker and Michael Massini. For Norton Cable Access, we have Ellen Kane. Uh, for the Permanent Building Committee, Robert Medeiros, Brian Bichette. For the Recreation Commission, we have Stephen Lucas. I believe, is that one? Okay, yeah. Yeah, Michael uh, Young, I, old. Correct. We'll, we'll skip him. Uh, for Serpid, uh, Sandra Otterhead. Town Common Committee is Keith Silver. Water Bodies Committee, uh, Patrick Carr. Uh, Water Bodies also Catherine Carr. And lastly, Zoning Board of Appeals, James Tenor. Okay, Chair, I a motion to appoint those people to their previous posts. Make a motion to approve um, as read. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Mike? Aye. Uh, Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. Thank you for reading those for me. Absolutely. Okay. A vote to appoint a request to appoint Heather McKibben for the appointments of the Water Bodies Committee. Surprised that wasn't in that list. Yeah, that wasn't on the list because it should be a new appointment. Okay. So, Chair would entertain a motion to appoint Heather McKibben. So moved. Second. Okay, in discussion? Hearing none, Mike? Aye. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Next is a request to appoint special police and matron reappointments for the Norton Police Department. Um, we have a, a letter from uh, Chief Clark and special police officers of Patrick Mahoney and Timothy Garrity and Police matrons Stephanie uh, Langton, Susan Hump, and uh, Courtney Foley. So, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, appoint those people to special police officers or the police matron. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mike? Aye. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Okay. Now the highlight of the night. Uh, we're going to vote on the retirement of Detective Todd A. Bramwall from the Norton Police Department. Um, Todd, do you know that guy? I've only known him for about uh, 53 years. <laughs> or 54. So is it Brad? Brad, is there a way to say no? Um, you can say no, but he's going. I hope he is. <laughs> he, he's already got his plans made. Yeah, that'd be fair enough. <laughs> so, um, we have a letter in the packet from Todd uh, requesting his retirement as of Friday, June 26, 2020. Detective Bramwell to you, please. <laughs> yeah, I think he's earned that title. <laughs> yeah, he'll always be Todd to me. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I should, maybe I should excuse myself from this one. But uh, Chair would entertain a motion to accept uh, 
Detective Todd Andrew Bramwell's uh, retirement or request for uh, retirement effective June 26, 2020. And, okay, could I have a second? Second. Okay. I assume there's no further discussion. discussion. That, one okay. question, Brad. So, yeah. so you read it as his retirement, but what we have in the packet is that um, he be appointed a special police officer in accordance with that policy. Right. So you, you, you need you, to read that. Well, I think what I think what we're going to do is do them separately. He's retiring as a full-time police officer. He, we're going to appoint him to be a special police officer uh, role so that he can fulfill like road details like okay. many of the uh, other um, retired police officers. So I think it's probably cleaner if we keep them, get them retired first and then appoint them to a special, if that's all right with the board. Yes, I, I just wasn't sure the process. I'm, I was just looking yeah, at I, I, I think the best thing is we get, get rid of them so that we can hire them back. <laughs> Not that I would do that to my brother. So, I don't know if we've got the motion to accept his uh, retirement effective June 26. Do yep. we have the approval? Yeah, so moved, Brett. Okay, and the second? Second. Okay, and if there's no further discussion, uh, we'll go to the, the vote. Mike? Aye. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I think for one of the last times I have to excuse myself because it has to do with police detail, uh, uh, police business. So I, I abstain. Now, in regard to the same officer, uh, the chief has asked that um, Todd Andrew Bramwell be appointed as a special police officer in accordance with Policy 4.39, retiree as special police officer, effective uh, July 1st, 2020. So, Chair would entertain a motion to for doing that, to make him a special. Make a motion to accept uh, uh, Chief Clark's recommendation for Officer Bramwell. I second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to the vote. Mike? Aye. Renee? Yes. And Jack? Yes. And again, I'll, I will abstain. Okay. Um, well, while it's not in here to vote on, I want to, there is in our packet a, another letter of uh, resignation that I'd like to read into the uh, minutes. And that's from our Robert R. Whitfield. And he hereby submits his letter of resignation as a Norton Police Sergeant, effective July 5th, 2020. He, he would like to thank the Norton Police Department for allowing him to serve the community of Norton and for the last 33 plus years. And he indicates it was a pleasure and well re rewarding experience. And I think while we're at it, we should uh, accept his resignation also. Um, I can tell you Todd and Mr. Whitfield I remember went to the same uh, police academy, which I believe at the time was held up in Foxborough. So, so they, they I, I remember them both at the, their graduation, which told you how old I am. <laughs> so, Chair, I a motion to accept uh, Officer or Sergeant Whitfield's retirement uh, resignation. So moved. Second. Okay. And any discussion? Um, Brett, I was just wondering, is, yeah. uh, is Chief Clark on? Is there any additional information or background? Because I, I know for your brothers, he's retiring. Does uh, Sergeant Whitfield have any position somewhere? 
I believe he's retiring. Oh, good Chief. Good evening. So Sergeant Whitfield is uh, is the chairman mentioned. They both actually went to the academy together, so we're losing 66 years of of police experience there. They came in together and now they're leaving together. Um, I will, in the probably for the next um, select board meeting, have a uh, have a request to add Sergeant Whitfield as a special police officer. I'm still waiting for a couple of documents um, that we use that goes through our policy, um, but he'll stay on as a special police officer. Um, he's been a sergeant for a number of years. Um, you know, he's been on a variety of different shifts. So it's, you know, both are a big loss to the police department. I, I, I can only say that it's going to be strange until Officer or Sergeant Whitfield becomes a special. It's going to be strange going by a construction site and not see him. <laughs> because I, I don't think he ever goes home. He, he, he works his regular shift and then he goes to direct traffic. So I don't know, I don't know how you could fill the shifts, Chief, without his, uh, the manpower of Officer Whitfield. It won't be but, easy to uh, big shoes to fill. I, I, I know, uh, well, Officer Whitfield and Todd both put a lot of time and effort into their, uh, into the Norton Police Department. And, uh, I remember, hey, I'll stop reminiscing the old man. I remember when my brother Todd first was, uh, became a patrolman because everybody in the family had to have their police scanners. <laughs> and it took me about a month to finally take my police scanner and unplug it and put it down the solid because I, I got more worked up and worried about what was going on out in the, on the streets. It wasn't worth me being informed. <laughs> it was it was probably just enough information to make me nervous. So I, uh, on a personal note, I'll thank both of them for the board from the board of selectmen, but on a personal note also. Yeah, no, I was talking to Todd a little today, and you know, over the last twenty years, so he's been in detectives for twenty one and a half years, a court prosecutor for um, well, probably over fifteen years, dealing with the Attleboro District Court and the whole most of the people and it takes the right personality to do that and um but over 20 years he's dealt with every major case in norton he's been a part of so quite a quite a legacy to leave yeah you have to find somebody else to make friends with all the uh attorneys in alamar <laughs> <laughs> okay that's right that's so. right everybody I know Todd because he is a good guy and a good cop, and I know his daughter be honest because she plays softball. That's not I. Okay. I think we took care of all the business on this, didn't we? Mr. Eunice, did, did we take care of all the business? Um, you did. Okay. I just want to make sure that we crossed the T's and dotted the I's and got that right. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our licenses and permits. And we have an application for a, uh, a beer and an all alcohol license to be utilized uh, at the Everett Leonard Park on, gosh, I'm, I'm looking and it's on uh, July 4th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, it's a private party for Re Rebecca Devine and uh it's been signed off it it looks like uh there is a notation that i couldn't completely read but i think they're waiting they haven't gotten rsvps to have an exact number of attendees but it's been signed off by the uh police and fire so chair and had a motion to approve the all alcohol license so move subject to compliance with any state guidance at the time of the event on number of guests allowed. Okay. Is there a second? Can I ask point of information? Sure. Um, so usually do we, I mean, to speak to what um, Jack had mentioned. So during COVID, have, we, have you approved any of these during the COVID period yet? We, we have approved them this year. Some of them have had to be uh, postponed to later dates. And as Jack stipulated, they're all going to be subject to, like, if there's a 
limitation on the number of people at uh, the facility or something like that. We, we don't know what the rules are going to be at the time. He, his uh, amendment to the motion uh, kind of covers us that we, we can't be held responsible if, you know, only 20 people can attend something that you can't, we can't allow a license for 100. And, and Michael, we had, Michael, we had Sharon here, I, I believe, two meetings ago, and, and we asked her similar questions. And she, based on the dates, um, she's reviewing these to make sure that they're in compliance and, and moving forward if, uh, you know, if there's no issues and then, you know, would would address if there were issues. So she, okay. she's taken the responsibility, and they, or I should say the accountability of making sure that upon our um, approval that they are in compliance with any sort of statutes or requirements that we get from the state. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. And they, they do, Mike, have to sign off on the rules at the time and discuss it with Sharon uh, before they have the event. Great. Thank you. Okay. If there are no other further questions, we have it. Uh, motion and a second. Uh, we go to the vote. Mike? Aye. Uh, Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote oh, yes. Okay. Announcements. Jack, would you like to? Why? One, one of our announcements is a reminder of the town meeting, June 27th at 9 a.m. at the Norton High School football field. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, luckily I went through 12 years to Norton schooling and I can read that. <laughs> uh, 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 does anyone else have any other announcements this evening? Uh, I, I have one to share. Okay. There is a vacancy on the Water Sewer Commission. Um, it did not go filled uh, with the most recent election, so there is a three-year spot available on that board that the uh, select board can appoint someone to. So if there's anyone interested um, listening, either on TV or in internet land, please send a note to uh, the town manager, munits at nortonmaus.com uh, with your interest, and we can uh, take those up at a future meeting. Very good. Thank you, Jack. Anyone so, else have anything? Um, Brad, not in respect to announcements, but want to um, talk briefly about the town meeting. Yep. Uh, because we haven't, the last time that we actually met, we were, well, the last time that we talked about the town meeting, we were supposed to vote on whether or not to get a tent or not. Uh, the mm -hmm. other thing that we were assured was that there would be a lot of communication in respect to how we're going to hold the town meeting. Um, I haven't received anything yet. I know that there is a video posted, but I'm, I'm getting more text messages and um, questions about the town meeting and, and what, what people should be expecting. So can we, can we talk to that briefly as part of the announcements? Sure. I don't think it's any place else on our agenda, so it would seem appropriate. So town meeting is at 9 a.m. Registration check-in will be starting at 8.30. Um, and people will be there before that. Um, there will be parking in the parking lot by the baseball fields, and there will also be um, parking behind the high school uh, for handicap accessibility. It will be easier for uh, residents to get to the uh, ball field that way. Um, there will be seats set out. Uh, they will all be six feet apart. And if anyone wants to bring their own chair, if they feel more comfortable doing that, they can bring their own chair. Um, the, also, um, everyone should wear a mask and we'll have hand sanitizer available. Um, there'll be uh, three porta potties um, by the football field with hand sanitizer available for anyone that has to go into the porta potties or come out of the porta potties. Um, and uh, we'll have an ambulance on site um, just in case there is anyone that has any issues. And uh, I think that's all the selectmen and the school committee and 
the uh, moderator and town council will be sitting on the lower level of the bleachers looking out towards the field the uh, moderator and uh, town clerk will be positioned right in the middle and i don't know if you have any other what, what about fin the uh, those reading in the warrants fincom so the, the chair and the, the uh, yeah the chair and the vice chair of the finance committee will have a separate table up there and um, we'll have portable microphones out on the field. So if anyone has a question, they'll be asked to uh, raise, stand and raise their hand and a microphone will be brought to them. And are we doing a um, display a projector? We are not. Okay, so how, be, how are we handling the warrant? There'll be a hundred and we printed 150 warrants that will be available when pe people check in. Now, are we supplied? No, Chris had mentioned previously about supplying, I thought he said sunscreen and insect propellant. Is that still something that's happening? They will have some of that available. Um, and also, um, we ask people to bring a bottle of water with them, but we'll also have water available just in case. And what about pens or pencils? Um, there's not going to be any need for pens or pencils. So if people are expecting to write anything down from the meeting, they should bring their own? Bring their own, yes. Okay. And then, uh, so we never voted on the tent, nor did we discuss it again. What's the situation with the tent? Um, it looks like the weather is going to be fine. So um, it doesn't look like there's any need for a tent. That's... Okay. And if that changes? Um, I know... Um, after your last meeting, um, Chris Sina called the tent company and they said, we can't wait any longer. We've got these tents, we're committing them. So we don't have, there won't be a tent available. We'd have to go to the rain date. Okay. Um, well, so far we're gonna get lucky. It's in the afternoon, but it keeps shifting. Uh, so, Mike, what about communication? Because I know uh, prior to the election, I received several alerts, several emails. I haven't seen anything on this. And um, not only the communications, but we talked about a map as well, so people understand the setup. Um, and included in that map is supposed to be the area where those who choose not to wear a mask are going to be um, asked to sit in. So where where is that area? And then also, where is the map? Um, I'll have to check on the map, whether that was put up on the site or not. I know uh, it was covered in the video we did for town meeting um, on cable. So I'll have to uh, check on that. Okay. Um, and then what about what about a communication plan? So how are we planning to actually reach out to people other than the video? Um, uh, tomorrow, there'll be a um, reverse 911 reminding everyone the town meeting is at nine o'clock. So Mike, I'm on the uh, news item for town meeting. I do not see the map posted, so it would be great yeah. to add up there. Um, a lot of the other, you know, other information is there. For the warrants that are printed, are they gonna have the final information as it stands now? So I know in years past, there's been uh, between a minor amount and a major amount of revisions uh, that have been shown on the big screen in the auditorium. Um, are we, just so people will be able to follow along, are we in the good shape? Yeah, there's no major revisions. The only revision will be um, the Article 4 that you're going to be asked to vote on tonight. Other than that, um, everything is still the same. So Mike, is that isn't it required that they have that in writing, whether it be on screen or in person? No. I mean, I, I would think, we're, are you sure? Yes. Is there a way that we could have a, a supplemental page printed with any revised text that's available? Is that well, I, you know, I think well, there, yeah, there, there's actually no revised text. It would just be the motion that's going to be made um, for the article. 
I think whatever we can do to, to harmonize the language that gets read at town meeting and what people have on their hands so they don't get frustrated and they're able to follow along would be uh, something smart to do, especially if it's just a, a short little one page. Um, so Mike, what's, what's going to be, what's your questions first? Um, the alert that's on our homepage, can we get that bumped up to the, the top of the 2020 spring annual town meeting? So that's the first thing people see. Sure. Is it possible as well to get some bullets under there of like what you just reviewed? So, um, registration at 8:30, meeting at nine seats will be six feet apart. Actually, I've put the encouraging masks. Like people should wear masks, they should bring water, like put the things that they need to do first. And then after that, you know, put the uh, the other information that you provided, the seats, the hand sanitizers, ambulance, et cetera. Okay. Because um, I think that that'll help just so people can hone in on it. I, I know when I was looking last night, like we have like, there's like six or seven documents out there. And it was hard when we started first looking at it at the EDC meeting, like we had to jump around and figure out which was the one that we actually wanted to look at, you know, because I, I know we post them up as, as they're available or, or you need to post them up. Um, and then I'm assuming that that information is going to be in the reverse 911 as well. So people will know exactly what to expect. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and I think Jackie already mentioned the map, right? So the map will be put on the alert with the other attachments. Like, yeah. And I'm just curious, what is the purpose of the map? So that people understand how, how the area is going to be and really the, the flow from the parking right. over there. Um, and I don't know, did you answer where, where's the, the section where folks who don't want to wear a mask going to be? Um, they're just going to walk them over to a, a section towards the, as you're looking out on the field to the left side of the seats. Okay. So can we make sure that that's on, on the map too? All right. You're, you're planning on having the uh, the emergency management team out to help guide people like you did the election, correct? Exactly. People will be directed to that area. And they'll also be uh, making sure that people don't move the seats around other than if it's a couple and they want to sit together. And then what are we doing to inform folks that this the warrant article is focused on the budget items um, as well as provide them with the information that the expectation is that the last five or six that are zoning articles are going to be referred back to committee and, and not have discussion so people don't feel compelled to come out? Um, we can put that on the alert too. Okay. And if we can be clear that those articles, while they're being referred back to committee, the expectation is that they'll be on the next town meeting, I think that that, that will certainly help. Um, and then can you get that in the alert too? Yeah. Um, online? Are there any other modes that we can communicate? I mean, once we see that go up, we can obviously push it through social media, but anything else that you've historically used other than the reverse 911 and the I think it'd be good on the um, the highway boards through town. I don't know if you've driven through Mansfield or all, but they, they were highlighting their town meeting at Xfinity uh, for the past few days. And I know they had that on Tuesday. So I think if we are able to do the same, I know we, I think the ones we have are probably talking about the road work downtown. If it's possible to add additional text to those. Yeah, I'll check with the highway and see uh, if they're all being used up. I know, um, I think there was an issue with the, t the sign in front of the school. It may not be working because I, I know we were trying to get something posted on there. So I'll double check on that. How do, how, what's the message we have on the one in front of town hall, Mike? I don't remember, to be honest with you. Just uh, probably the time, the day and the time. Okay. Could we add those couple of items about, you know, attendees um, should wear masks, bring a bottle of water, pen and pencil? Okay. Again, and like just the things that we want them, that they would have to prepare to do beforehand? Yep. Um, excuse me, Mr. Chair, may I say something? Yes, sure, certainly. Um, I just want you to know um, that I found out today uh, that the, the electronic sign up front of the school is now working. They got the part in. They couldn't do it for the election last week, but it is now working. 
Um, you can contact Laurie Kazani, she will put it up for you. And just one other thing that if you can put on there for check-in, um, not 8.30, if you could put 8 o'clock, it would be very much appreciated so we can get the crowd through faster. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I, I, I was at the Mansfield Town meeting and they had, they had, um, they had a trailer where the people sat and they had chairs lined up there. So it's like going to be saying we're going to be there right and early. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to our new business. The first item is an accreditation awarded to the Norton Police Department from the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission. Mike or Steve Clark. Steve Clark. I knew what you oh. <laughs> you, know, you can go, Mike. No, go ahead. So I had received a, a formal letter from the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission uh, dated June 4th. Um, I guess I'll read it if you don't mind. Um, Certainly. It says, Dear Chief Clark, it is my pleasure to confirm that on this date, June 4th, 2020, the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission voted to award accreditation to the Norton Police Department. This procedure step, either status has been awarded for another three year period ending May, 2023. As you know, the integrity vested in your department continues to presume functional compliance with program standards in between assessments, which includes complying with all new and amended standards adopted by the commission. In order to assist your department in its credit accreditation maintenance efforts, please be advised that a scheduled midpoint review of selected time sensitive standards will be conducted with your accreditation manager during this three-year period. Re-accreditation demonstrates your department's ongoing commitment to delivering an exemplary level of police service in your community. As you know, it is a lot of hard work in a department-wide effort. Again, we commend your department for its accomplishment and applaud you personally for your leadership role in the process. We look forward to working with you with the ongoing pursuit of excellence on behalf of the commission Thank you for your participation in the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Program, and congratulations on a job well done. Uh, from uh, Donna Taylor Mullers, the Executive Director. Um, you know, just just very quickly. So this is the uh, this is our third reaccreditation. Um, there is quite a bit of work that goes into it. I just wanted to recognize Lieutenant Todd Jackson, who's our accreditation manager, and he's assisted by uh, Rachel Mayu. Uh, Officer Rachel Mayu, uh, who do a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, you know, it's an independent evaluation by outside assessors who really look at our policies, our follow-up documentation, our building and security, and they're, they're quite critical of the operations. So it's not, you know, what I, I would say it's not a rubber stamp effort. Um, but as stated in the letter, it really is the department-wide policy, department-wide effort. Um, and we couldn't do it without all the officers being on board. But so thank you chief job well done i i know previous years especially the first year you got this it was amazing because you went into enormous detail all the the different criteria they look at and it's a an amazing thing it's like uh, almost like taking an sat test for kind of thank you chief does anyone else have any comments or questions uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just would like to say, I think um, this is such a great acknowledgement of the work that you've done. Um, clearly, there's a, a lot of um, tension when it comes to the criminal justice system and police in general. I think stuff like this highlights just what a, a great department that Norton has uh, under your leadership, Chief Clark. And um, you know, we're very fortunate to have you at the helm and the officers that you have, um, I think you you guys always strive for the best. Um, it's uh, how many years in a row have we been either the first or second safest communities in town? In addition to, to this accreditation, I mean, it's just 
we're a small town, but I think we punch above our weight class in terms of the quality of policing that gets done. So um, you know, we're extremely fortunate uh, to have the officers that we do in town. You know, I appreciate everything that went into securing this again for the third time. This is uh, pretty cool. Do you know how prevalent this accreditation is in terms of other uh, departments in towns this size? Uh, well, there's only, I don't have it uh, on, I think there's uh, 90 departments throughout the Commonwealth that are now accredited. When we first batted, it was only, uh, there was less than 20, I believe. Uh, it's definitely becoming, you know, more prevalent. There's a lot of people that are now in self-assessment, which is really just starting out and looking at your, your policies and procedures. Um, then the next phase is certification and then uh, accreditation. So um, there's definitely a big push. This is, you know, it's, with police reform, it's, it's going to be mandated at some point in time. So we're really ahead of the curve, but I appreciate all your, your kind words. Thank you, Chief. If no one else has anything else to add, we can move on to a review and or vote on the marijuana application RFI uh, process. I assume, Renee, you're going to take the lead on this. I believe I am, yes. Uh, give me one second here. I, I hope so, because I think you know more than the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a couple updates. Um, the EDC met yesterday, and we, we talked about the application process. There is uh, uh, one update that we did based on town council's guidance back to us. So I did um, I did send the application uh, process, the, the last draft that we had with town council's comments in it to the board, I believe, uh, several days ago. So if I may um, share my screen and show, just review quickly um, the comments that, um, that we went through and then um, the changes that we made. And then from that point, I, I do have a final copy that I can, I can send around, um, but I just needed a couple bits of information from Mike on this. Um, so if I can add to this too, just again as a refresher, so the, the reason for the application process is because we have limited the number of marijuana retail establishments to the state, uh, the state minimum, which is 20% of our liquor licenses. <clears throat> so that means at present that we can provide um, to, or we can, we'll permit two establishments within the town of Norton. So because we've had more than, I think at this point, at least six who have indicated interest in Norton, uh, town council advised that the, the best course of action um, is to have an application process that we open up for a certain amount of time, collect the applications, and then um, in our case, we will have a subcommittee that will review those and then provide recommendations back to the board. And I'm sorry, I don't have my video on, so let me, let me do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we went, you know, as, as we discussed, the, the EDC went and we created the application process based on a template. Um, we did meet with both um, Mike Unit, the town manager, and Paul DiGiuseppe, the director of planning, um, and reviewed the process with them as well as the subcommittee uh, that we wanted to put together. So um, what, what you had sent to you included the comments from them as well as the comments back from town council following that meeting with them. Um, so I'd like to pick it up there and, and we'll just talk about some of the, the changes that we, we put in here and it's very minor, uh, but I just want the board to be fully informed on this, especially uh, if we are able to vote on it this evening. Okay, so let me just make sure I have the right document here. It's weird, I have the right document on my screen, but it doesn't want to let me share that one <laughs> one second. It's sharing with Zoom, so it, it's not. Okay, let's go. Okay, you should now see the town of Norton request for information on the screen. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, a couple things on this, the, the highlighted areas, of course, for the RFI, um, we just have to put in whatever location we post this on the website. 
Uh, Mike, we had some questions. We assume that you already have an existing process for RFIs and RFQs, and if possible, we would just like to leverage that process and both posting it to the town website and then any sort of post to make folks aware that we're, gonna, we're going through this. I don't know if this falls under any sort of guidelines. We can certainly ask if that's the case, um, but can you provide some insight into that, that process now? Yeah, I, I think I don't have the website up, but I think there's actually, you know, the, the um, quick link areas. I think there is one there um, for that. So yep. we'll alert them to that one. Okay. And then do we typically post that anywhere else? Like, do, do you give notification to the Chronicle or Sun Chronicle or, in, or post it at, in, well, um, not in person, but at a location? Well, each, whatever we do, like certain value of what we're doing require things to be um, advertised. Some don't. So the higher cost projects, we do advertise in the Sun Chronicle. Yeah. And so this is a little different, right? Because we're right. asking them to apply to us. Yes. Um, is there a way, can we find a middle ground maybe just so we can get the word out as much as possible? Yeah, I'll have to think, uh, trying to think of somewhere that would be worth I know. Weed, some weed publication? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. High Times. What was that? High <laughs> Times, is that what you said? <laughs> I bet there's got to be, there's got to be a website out there that uh, the industry goes to. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I think on, you know, on online, I think we're probably covered. I'm just wondering if there's anything else that that you do typically that would make sense to do. Um, so once, a, so I'll update just the RFI based on um, the homepage address on here. And then if we go down under the deadline for responses, so we talked about this and we were looking at the one RFQ that's on there. Um, and what, what we decided is that the deadline for submission of the RFI, and we'll have to modify this from when we posted, but it would be open for 45 days. Um, so we, we could enter that date in once that's completed. Um, scrolling down, one of the things that we had a question on to town council was in respect to the security plan. So the security plans, as, as she indicated, um, what typically or what was in this draft initially was that they would be provided to us in a sealed envelope um, and then those were, would be confidential. The, the question that we came up with, with within the EDC is that how, do, how would we review that confidential information within the open meeting um, open meeting law guidelines. Um, she said that it's not um, a reason to go into executive session. So her suggestion was to redact the submissions um, to be reviewed. So what we did is we made changes um, on this to be specific and you'll see it up top that any, um, any uh, proprietary information should be redacted. And then additionally at the bottom, I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm scrolling because it's in two different places within the document. Um, within the bottom, we just modified the text to read that under public records, because what she said is, well, we can keep it confidential. If there were a public records request, we would have to turn that over. So um, we just made a note here. Uh, we kept the original sentence that said all information contained in submittals and not redacted as above may be open for public inspection. Um, and then we removed the security related information that would be treated as confidential, but potentially could be requested. Uh, because really what we want to say is, is we just don't want that confidential information. It should all be redacted. And if we have a question, if that's something that, you know, we need to have you, Mike, or, or Paul go back to get, then um, we can certainly do that. But otherwise, it, it helps us so that we aren't um, holding on to any confidential information that can later be requested through a public rec record search or request. Um, so that change was there. The other change, too, is we had a question on whether or not um, we wanted to ask for a li whether the retailer was able to obtain liability insurance. Um, and you'll see town council had mentioned that um, a company who would, hasn't secured a lease or without a lease might not be able to actually you know, obtain insurance for that. And so um, what we did is we referred back to the CCC and this item is actually within the Cannabis Control Commission. So we removed it from our application process. Additionally, there were some questions from or, or just comments from Paul noting that there were some areas where within the application process we, we asked for information and that information would be also 
um, requested once a special permit of site plan approval process began to. Um, Amy indicated on there that it's acceptable for us to require the information here. And it actually, she said it, it does, um, it's good to get the information because we'll have it up front. And if the, the select board has any questions or wants to see that information, they have it immediately. It's not something that we would have to wait for the special permitting process and then um, request it from the planning board. So those were just some comments that, that Paul put in, um, but we, we addressed the same across the, uh, um, across the application. And I think that was it. The, uh, I know Paul initially had a question about the, um, how we would measure the overall goals of the town. Um, it's pertaining to his last bullet that says the respondent's proposal integrates into the overall goals of the town. Um, and initially we talked about this and I did put the note in here and that you guys received in respect to, you know, it really that the process is based upon the review of the subcommittee. Um, as well as the members there to leverage information that's available in the current environment. So, you know, whether or not um, other projects were recently approved or, or um, opinions or discussions that took place in public forums, uh, all of that information would really uh, be used as, as a, uh, a point for evaluation, you know, within the overall application process. So, uh, having said that, uh, so the application process, as I mentioned, is only for retail dispensaries. Um, it is not, it doesn't apply, the, the license limitation doesn't apply to the medical treatment centers um, or the uh, formerly known as the registered medical marijuana dispensary. So it, it is only for adult use marijuana retail uh, establishments. Um, in respect to the process, so it does happen prior to a host community agreement being signed. Um, like I said, we would open up the application process. The subcommittee would review the information and then they would provide recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. From there, based on the recommendations, the Board of, uh, board of Selectmen, I said that the select board um, would enter into an HCA with any applicant that they deemed um, appropriate or, or decided that they wanted to enter into the engagement. And then from there, uh, the applicant would be able to um, work with the Cannabis Control Commission on their license. So they have to have the license um, prior to uh, submitting for or applying for a special permit with the planning board. Um, a couple of things to note is we had questions on whether or not we could start the application process now, given that the, the proposed bylaw has not been um, presented at town meeting or voted on. Um, town council indicated that yes, we absolutely can start the application process now. She said we can start the application process. We can e even enter into an HCA. Um, on the HCA, we would have a provision that the location will be allowed by special permit and then um, essentially which would void the HCA in the future if the bylaw did not pass. So that would be any of the locations. Um, while we have industrial right now approved, um, it would only apply to those locations that are, are in commercial or village commercial areas with, within the marijuana overlay district. Um, so we are, you know, if, if the, uh, the board approves this, um, this evening, our, our expectation is that we will move forward and, and fairly quickly and getting the RFI out there to at least open the window, the 45 day window to accept applications and then uh, proceed with the review process um, once it closes. The other thing that she had mentioned is, and, and I meant um, because our next topic is the HCA that we received. Um, one of the things that, that she had mentioned is the HCA negotiation typically happens with one select board member, um, and it's typically a person who is, is most or well versed in the, the cannabis industry. Um, and she said there, the reason is, is that, you know, the select board member would work with the town manager and the applicant on negotiating the HCA. Um, we would make changes based on, uh, you know, what, what was in the best interest of the town, and then the negotiated HCA would come back to the select board for um, review and or approval. So I wanted to mention that because again, this is an item where, uh, while you know, we typically hear, you know, like the contract negotiations, we go into executive session, this does not qualify for executive session. Um, so that's typically why you work, the town manager will work with one member of the board um, who can make decisions and like I said, is most familiar and then um, propose the final negotiated contract back to the select board. Thank you, Renee. Any, any questions that I can answer on the process or the application um, document that you've received? Uh, the time and effort that you put into it 
I didn't even think of a question. I, uh, I appreciate the amount of time that you've all put into this document. And uh, I, I, I can't, I probably don't know enough to make an intelligent question. But and as long as you understand the document and the process, yeah, that's really no, all we want to make sure of, right? Yeah, no, it, it, seem, it seems like it's clear in my head how it's going to go. So I'm not going to get too deep into it because I'll just confuse myself. Anyone else have any questions or comments? No, yeah. This is a, an amazing amount of work, Renee, and I know you've been championing this for the better part of, what, a year and a half now, if not longer. So I'm very glad for you that it's finally coming into fruition. <laughs> so, uh, somewhat. I mean, the, <laughs> we still need the town meeting. That's the most important part. Yeah, we're getting there. I know we, we are. We're, we're hitting, you know, milestone by milestone. And at least, you know, the good news was with town council saying that we can proceed with the application process, you know, even in light of, of moving these warrant articles to a future meeting. I mean, that that just helps us, right? Because it's at least 45, I mean, it's a month and a half that the, um, you know, we'll accept the application. So certainly, you know, things can happen in parallel. But thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. I'm really surprised I'm not an avid user by now. <laughs> So, I mean, as a member of uh, the EDC, um, Renee has championed this and really structured this. What I've been most impressed by is she really is taking the care to try to address every comment, feedback we've gotten from every resident that's given us feedback. Um, and she's really put a lot of thought into at every level from our process, the uh, select boards process, to the um, host community host agreements. So, she really has been, this is a uh, this is her uh, baby, and she's struck to us well to uh, kind of put it all together. So, I, I think this should be sort of the template for how we implement strategies moving forward. Um, just great. that not quite single-minded focus, but a, a very detailed action plan. We have the goal in mind, and um, we work towards getting it done. And the steps may be small, they may be time-consuming, but look how far we've come in a year's time. Um, I think that's that's what we need to apply to a lot of these other things that are uh, within the town purview at this time. So thank you, Renee, for sort of setting that course and showing us how to get it done. No, thanks, Chuck. I mean, it's you know I didn't do it alone. The uh, the EDC is uh, I mean every every member has contributed in some way, shape, or form, and it was a lot of hours and a lot of time and and definitely a lot of very healthy debate and discussion. So. Um, I think that allowed us to come up with a with a really good process, I believe. Okay. And any other questions or comments? If not, Chair would entertain a motion to vote to support the application as presented by uh, Renee. So moved. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay. Is there any further de uh, discussion? Hearing none, Mike? Aye. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you, Renee. It, it's such an in-depth document that I would have gotten frustrated and lost halfway through the, the entire work that you've done on it. it. It took a lot of time. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thanks for the support to the board. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is a review and a vote on the Rosenbuds LLC host community agreement. So I, I think, Brad, in, in light of the application process, um, I think we need to defer this to a later date, at, um, okay. assuming at such time that it, it is recommended from the, uh, the subcommittee, the marijuana retail subcommittee, okay. and, and potentially an option for the board of, uh, for the select board. Ah. Um, oh. can, what I'd like to do though, um, Brad, is if I can, can I mention a couple things based on some feedback that we received from sure. our info session? Sure. No, I, when I saw this on the agenda, I, I was kind of confused. So I'm glad you told me we can kick this down the road a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, I think it's just timing too, right? Um, yeah. Because, you know, there are a couple things like that we talked about with town council specifically on the HCA. So, you know, one of the items is um, 
having the HDAs and doing this process and, and you know, what happens if we receive an application or an HCA for something that's already zoned. So this particular HCA that we received is in an area that is currently um, uh, as it has use in a industrial zone. Um, and one of the things that she had talked about is, you know, like I said, what risk do we have right now? And, and the, the risk of course is, is primarily to the planning board because they don't have guidance on retail establishments. Um, it's not in our current bylaw. Uh, but one of the things that she said, you know, should we, we continue with this and just timing if it hasn't been a town meeting yet, she's like, one of the things that we can consider is that we ask the applicant to adhere to the proposed changes. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not that the planning board doesn't have any guidance because they have their special permit process and the CCC has uh, pretty extensive recommendations and requirements. So there's some guidance there, but we do miss opportunities in respect to um, like right now, the bylaw we have, um, we have it set to limit to the uh, state minimum 20% in town. Um, you know, that's not in place right now. Like essentially if the select board chose to enter into multiple HDAs and, and five or six retail establishments opened up, we could do that because we don't have any requirements saying that, that we don't want to do that. So um, I, I think I only mentioned that because this one is in a, uh, in a zoned area um, for marijuana establishments right now. Uh, but we, we do want to, um, you know, defer the board, at least at this point from it because of, of the application process. And I have talked to the applicant about that and I, I shared with them the draft um, application process that, that we had reviewed, I want to say about a month ago on the EDC meeting. Um, so it is available online in the video. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to mention specifically from the info session is we had a couple of questions um, specific to a cultivator. And one of the things was what we asked town council because it came up on, on the meeting is, um, and I think I mentioned this, right? A lot, uh, two areas, well, one area specifically, but two individuals have provided feedback to us about uh, their concerns with odor mitigation. Um, and so the question posed to us was if it would be appropriate to, uh, appropriate to include in the HCA that a cultivator or a manufacturer um, as part of normal maintenance, replace their filters at six month intervals, whereas typically the guidance from the product uh, manufacturers to replace the filters annually. So we asked her that question. Um, we thought it may be more appropriate in the bylaw, but you know, our concern was that the bylaw wasn't going to keep up with newer and improved systems. And then we'd have an updated item that required a town meeting to correct. So she had indicated, and I'm just mentioning this because we can at this point accept HCAs from uh, we can enter into HDAs from other retail, or no, I'm sorry, marijuana establishments uh, because the application process only applies to retailers. So if we were to receive an HCA from a cultivator right now, one of the things that we would want to consider is, um, you know, whether or not we'd want to incorporate that condition in there. So she had said, you know, the HCA is essentially a contract between the parties. So if the company agreed, we would we could include that in there. Um, she said, though, it's not certain that a company will know the exact system they're installing at the time of the negotiations. Um, so just again, mentioning that for information to the to the board. The other thing too, what we are asked is whether or not the town can limit the number of cultivators and manufacturing establishments within the town, um, similar to limitation of retailers. And I'll expand on that a little bit. But her her general guidance was. Um, in her opinion, since Norton was a yes town on, on question four, that limiting anything but retail by the 20% rule would be considered prohibition and would require a town meeting vote and a ballot question. Um, that's similar to if we didn't want to follow the 20% rule, she said if we, if we went anything less than that, it would have to be again a uh, town meeting vote and, and voted on um, at an election. Now I want to um, just review and or, Give me one second, I'm just trying to find the document. Um, so I had some communication with uh, with one of the residents on this in respect to their question. Um, they they wanted a stipulation for the the filters of the HVAC unit to be changed between three and six months within the bylaw. But again, um, I think we would consider that within the HCA. Um, and then additionally, she clarified that the number, the limitation on the cultivators and manufacturers would relate to the, the number of retailers. So if there were two retailers in town, there could only be one cultivator or manufacturer. And if there, or if there were one retailer, then there could be two cultivators. So the total marijuana facilities would be no more than three. 
but again, that's, um, that's against what the town had voted. Um, so I mentioned it to the board for consideration. I mean, the other thing that's very clear from town council, we've talked about it before is that, um, you know, the, the HCA is separate and apart from the, the zoning approvals and the board or the select board is essentially the gatekeeper for this person and limiting the number of agreements it might sign. So it's something for us to consider. Um, we are not able to, again, like, um, we, we can't, um, limit anything without, um, a town vote and the, the ballot question. I can tell you from my perspective, and, and we've talked about this, um, the EDC is, is in agreement on this as well. You know, this is an economic development project. It's not, we wouldn't go to any other retailer and say, hey, you know, you're a pizza place. We're only going to put one here. Um, we're going to limit having, you know, pizza places within the town of Norton. So um, we don't feel that there's any change that is, is required. Um, the other thing, too, within the industry is that there are many, uh, many folks, and, and this came up during the planning board, and one of the reasons why we didn't, um, why we don't have two separate marijuana overlays, like one for retail and one for everything else, is that there are many small companies, um, so small businesses, which we, we do promote in the town of Norton, that they will have a small uh, cultivation area, manufacturing, and retail. So they might have, you know, their footprint might be 5,000 square feet, but 2,500 of that could be a cultivation facility. So any any um, any limitation that we would impose could essentially, you know, really make Norton not a business friendly community in that regard because we we, you know, you can you can think about the big cultivators like uh, Solar Therapeutics, right? They have a, a ginormous um, cultivation facility. They're not looking to do that in our town, but um, if somebody were, you know, it's certainly a a conversation for the board on whether or not to engage in, in an agreement with that type of a company, but. Um, I don't see the value to um, trying to reduce or limit any type of an establishment because, you know, it's it's legal. Like marijuana is legalized. It's just like any other uh, commercial business. Um, and I think that we've done a good job from the EDC's perspective in, you know, taking the considerations of the town, which had, have, um, for the most part, been geared around retail establishments and really putting in controls for that. So I mentioned that and, and certainly would, you know, ask for any comments or, or discussion on that. Okay. Does anyone have anything to say right now regarding the uh, post agreement type uh, things? Or? The host agreement not... or the, the comments that we received as, uh, you know, part of our meetings in the info session. Yeah. Uh, I would just say that I think uh, Renee should very clearly continue to be the point person for this for the select board. <laughs> um, your, your knowledge outpaces mine to a degree that could not be quantified in real numbers. So um, I'd be very happy to, to give you whatever support you needed, uh, but I think you should be leading this charge. Thank you, Jeff. Judgment and expert yeah. on that. Yeah, I think anybody else to step into her shoes now would take at least uh, 12 months to catch up. And Brad, this is with, take with a step a lot of backwards. Step. <laughs> yeah. The volunteers take a step backwards. Yeah, we we, we don't want we don't want to uh, take take any pressure off of Renee. We want to keep her where she is. She's doing a great right. job, and and she's got this thing taken care of, and she knows it better than any of them. Definitely better than anybody else on the board. So, so right, I appreciate I, that. I uh, I know personally I appreciate all the time you put into this. And you can tell that uh, you're you're passionate about not just this, but just about anything you uh, sink your teeth into, and and it serves us well. Thank you. Well, thanks, Brad. And I haven't thrown out yet, you know, my request for potentially a special town meeting if the zoning article's on, but it, since it's not on the agenda, I'll defer that to the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. So if there's nothing else to uh, do on this, we can move to a vote to accept the uh, cable access grant for uh, Camp the Edith Reed Conservation Land project. Mr. Units, you want to 
speak on this? Every year, the um, Norton Media puts out a request uh, for applications for grants, and they've granted uh, one thousand three hundred forty-four dollars and ninety-eight cents to be used um, for projection at Camp Eater Three. Now, is this uh, in indoor? Is it is it uh, outdoor in down the camp uh, property or? I am not sure. I'm assuming that this is going to be used in the lodge. Okay. I, I haven't seen that for at least 30, 40 years. So. Okay. Does anyone have any questions regarding this? But do we not have details as to what, what's being done? This is, uh, um, Jennifer's going to use this in the, the lodge down at uh, Camp Edith Reed so that when uh, groups are using um, the lodge, they can project to have um, companies or Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, anyone that wants to rent it, um, okay. would be able to present there. Okay. Is there a power of that structure? There is, yeah. I, I know there was. Yes. So, if there are no other questions, Chair would entertain a motion to accept the uh, cable access grant for use at the uh, Eta 3 Conservation Land Project. So moved. Second. Do have, oh, thank you. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing on Mike. You're muted, Michael. I hope so, because I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, yay. <laughs> Thank you. Renee? Yes. Um, Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. Okay, we have nothing on the old business. We're going to move on to the town Brad. manager's room. Yes. Brad, you missed one thing under uh, new business. Oh. I, item five. Review and vote Article Four of the uh, Town Meeting Warrant. Oh, I, did, yeah, I didn't have it on my copy of the. Yeah, neither did I. Um, Is so, that a revised agenda? Yes. And what this is, um, back in October, the board um, signed an agreement with Ask Me Council Ninety Three, the high, uh, the Water and Sewer Union, and. Uh, this is a contract that goes from July 1, 20 through um, June 30th, uh, 2023. And um, it has to be ratified by town meeting. It was not put on the uh, October warrant. And uh, it came to our attention just recently that this should be voted. Okay. And the money, the mo there'll be no additional money. The money's already in there. Water and so a budget. Yeah, I, I just did. I, I grabbed the uh, wrong agenda. So, does anybody have any uh, questions? So, um, Brad, if I can ask, so Mike, is this the part that you mentioned that um, we would? It's not in the warrant, but it would appear. I think you said it was Article Four for Saturday. The the articles in the warrant, but the um, motion from the finance committee was no action so they have to take this up before the town meeting at 8 30 on saturday so that's that's what would be different is the the recommendation we are missing from the printed right right and are they are they aware that they're being called in now before the meeting they are and which article is this because i'm looking at the articles i have is collective bargaining as for yeah that's the article. Okay. Is, is this the only um, CBA that's going to fall under that article? It is. And if it wasn't um, recommended or moved, what happens given that it's three days away? Two days away. Um, that's something I 
wouldn't contemplate i would imagine it would be um a legal issue because the contract was signed and uh you know we have it so there's an ability to do it but they they get their they get their raise i'm assuming one of us move it from the floor if we needed to mike um yeah, well, the, the finance committee will just would do it in their motion if they agree to it. Um, and if they don't, then you could, or uh, someone from Water and Sewer Commission could do it. Okay. Let's just have that backup plan in place in case for whatever reason they yep. maybe that would be for them Saturday morning. Okay. Any, any other questions? If not, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, vote to support what Article 4. Uh, on the town meeting warrant, which deals with the collective bargaining agreement in the, the water sewer commission. Um, just point of information. It doesn't say uh, what. Am I not? In my list, it says towns union. It doesn't say water commission in the article the way it's written, right? Water and sewer union. Oh, I, not the uh, not the. It does article. not say. It does not say that. No, not not in the article. That's that'll be in the motion. Okay. Yep. I mean. If, if you feel more comfortable, Chair would entertain a motion to vote to. Uh, Mike, meeting on. Uh, meeting on next. I've got some taping, Andrew, but I don't think it's the same. All right, somebody, somebody is uh, not muted um, with a number okay. that ends in 3055, if you could mute yourself. Thank you. If the, if the committee or uh, board is more comfortable, <laughs> They would entertain a motion to vote to um, support Article 4 of the town meeting warrant. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to the vote. Mike? Aye. Renee? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Unit, for catching that. And there's still no old business, so we're going to go to the town meeting, uh, town manager's report now. I uh, just wanted to let you know that our 112th budget was approved on uh, June 17th uh, by the state. Um, and then uh, the deficit spending request was approved um, for up to five hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars from the division of local services and then the cares act we received a payment of four hundred and eleven thousand one hundred and one dollars on june 19th uh, from the cares act fund and mike what, what was what were the reimbursement costs for that? It's awfully high. For the CARES Act? Uh-huh. Um, most of it, let's see. Um, Telework capacity and hardware and subscriptions, um, $49,908. Um, increased staffing, um, IT staff hours to support the telework, $6,400. Um, we had um, wellness check-ins uh, for the elderly. Uh, it was like $3,600, food for families, $231,821, uh, cleaning and disinfecting buildings, $98,799.81, uh, PPE was $15,000, backfilling at uh, public safety, um, due to positive tests, 18,000, um, and potential expenses, 
for the town pools and the recreation areas. Um, 64,000. And what, what was the town pools and the recreation areas? Um, 64,000. Now, what, what does that involve? You said potential costs, like potential like cleaning? Cleaning costs. Equipment? Uh, on uh, all the uh, playgrounds and the pool area. So, you mean like upon reopening, they may institute a, uh, some frequency of cleaning the playgrounds right. and pool? Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Yes. yes. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Jack. No, go ahead. I was okay. just going to ask the, the CARES, is that the 1.1 million that we received? Uh, 1.7. 1.7, thank you. So that was actually my question. Is this over and above the 1.7 or is this a payment on the 1.7? Yeah, it's a payment out of that 1.7. And um, then the next thing I have is um, on meals through the summer. Um, I know that um, you might have seen that uh, the YMCA, the Attleboro YMCA, put in for a $50,000 grant for Norton for uh, meals for adults. Um, I know that the uh, school program, uh, the USDA has extended the child reimbursement program until August 31st. And um, the funding from FEMA technically runs out tomorrow. And MEMA has filed for an extension uh, for that funding because that, that's money that's used for adults. And uh, hopefully uh, they, they'll grant that extension on that program for them. I know that um, the Matt Wells had said that if um, it may take a week or so, it has in the past when um, Mima applies for the extension, so it could cost us eight thousand uh, dollars for food for adults in that time frame while we're waiting. And, and that that expense would be eligible to come out of the another. Uh, Check from CARES. Yeah, we'll we'll apply for, for CARES funding for that. Okay. So, Mike, can you remind me? And, and I know Matt is on, so maybe you'll have him talk. But the the percentage reimbursed from FEMA was it seventy five percent for 70, adults? Yes, seventy five. And Rebecca Mowry from uh, the the uh, fire department is our. Nemer expert on filing, so she's working on that um, right now, filing with them. Do you know the details on the YMCA program, Mike? Um, I know that uh, she figures it would be four weeks from the date that she applied before she, um, the funding would be available, so that would be like July 14th. Um, and um, they would uh, administer the program, the YMCA, so they'd take 5% of the 50000 for their administration administration costs, and then uh, no other details up for, other than that right now on how it's going to be uh, handled if they get it. So it would be different than them doing it at the high school, Mike? Um, they could. No, they very well could do it um, at the high school. Right. They, they just might use the funding to pay for right. the food service. And if we got both, can we use the the grant from the YMCA to, to offset the twenty five percent? We we could rather than uh, use the CARES uh, Act money. CARES Act funding for this, we could use the Y money. Mike, do you remember offhand the, the $231,000 that we have for the food? Um, what time frame, like how many weeks that actually covers? Um, three months, I think, Matt, right? 
Yeah, that was April, May, and June. That was our initial anticipation of what the cost was going to be. So uh, initial anticipation, is that the cost or did we apply uh, for that reimbursement without final figures? We had to provide estimates for that um, as part of the CARES Act. We, were, we They required us to submit the estimate of what the cost would be. As the actuals are coming in, we're finding that um, the Charwells has been very efficient in, in their production. Uh, they've applied for a number of different grants and have been awarded. So they've been getting um, what essentially with the grants ends up being a donation of food that doesn't get charged and we're able to serve uh, as part of the meals program. So uh, we went from uh, initially we were looking at an estimate of six dollars uh, for an adult meal and five dollars for a child meal with a blended rate of five fifty. Uh, in the month of May, the cost was actually three dollars and sixty five cents. So uh, considerable savings. Uh, so. I don't know if the number's going to be quite as high as we thought it would be. So Matt, do you have any any idea from April, May, and June with the expenses, or at least April, May, with the uh, expenses for the adult yeah. meals? Yeah, um, April was uh, right around fifty-two thousand uh, dollars, of which um, I think uh, thirty-six thousand dollars was USDA reimbursable. May was fifty-five thousand uh, dollars, which is split fifty-fifty. Twenty-seven and a half was. Um, USDA reimbursement and 27 and a half would be FEMA. That cares. And we're seeing about, that would mean we're seeing about 200 adults through the program? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The average has dropped slightly, but we did have, uh, since I ran the average this week, we, we started seeing some upticks in the adults again. Uh, we saw 209 adults yesterday, so there's still definitely a need in the, in the, in the community. One of the things we were talking about today on our uh, Zoom conference was last year, I think unemployment in Norton was about 2.3%. And right now it's 16.8. Wow. So did I hear correctly that the reimbursement from CARES on the food program was 231,000? Is that that's who we put in as our estimate, yeah. Okay, and is that to cover 100% of the food or the town's 25% share? Right now that would cover 100, but if we get, you know, FEMA money, um, then that, that money's available for other things. Okay, I was just thinking about the, the weekly burn rate on that because it's about 20 grand for the, for the 12 weeks. Okay. So the 8,000 that you were talking about, Matt, would just be for the town share for the adults? Yeah, that, that's the adults uh, running an average of 200 adults a day um, at the, the uh, well, that was at the, the five, five and change per meal. Uh, at the 365, it would be slightly less, probably around $5,000 to 200. Okay. And Mike, the CARES Act funding, so we have this 231,000 that's already approved. Um, the CARES Act funding must be, it, it's for the time period through December 31st at this point, right? It's, yep. Okay. And I did talk to, uh, Congressman Lynch last night at my town meeting, and, uh, I was asking if there was any possibility that that money would be converted to regular budgets, and he said there's, he was not confident of that. Um, that's not what the intent is, but he said the new bill they have out there, hopefully there will be money for our cities and local communities uh, for budget. So hopefully they come through with that. Okay. But I mean, on a, on a positive note, this at least means that, especially with that, the, the increase in the unemployment rate that we have at this point and with the reimbursement schedule, we have enough money to, to fund this at the present rate for the next few months. Right. I would say yes. Okay. And this does include, I, I believe it was, I, Matt, I don't know if this was your email or Mike, your email. It includes the meals being delivered as well, right? To those folks who can't make it to the high school. That's correct. Okay. Is that primarily um, an older population or, or is that extended to anybody who might not be able to get that? So we extended it to anyone who was uh, had difficulty in getting to the high school. Um, a lot of them are homebound uh, for, for numerous reasons. 
Um, we have other folks where there's only one car, dad works 12 hours a day, and there's just no way for them to get there. Um, they have children in the house. So it's, it's a mix of the two. Um, but certainly we've, we've spoken with emergency management and they said that need is definitely critical in the people they're delivering to. Of course. Mike, how are we on resources for that from the emergency management team? Are we still, we still look okay? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you guys mm -hmm. for the updates. I think that this is a, a good service all around and, and one that we need to continue to support throughout the community. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, I'm with Renee. I think uh, we try to keep this going as, as long as feasible. Yeah, definitely. And, and uh, for leading that and helping us understand what the, the financial exposure is on that and putting it into context. Yeah. Uh, I th I th I just say going forward, I, I think I'll start doing uh, probably more frequent reports because I really want to make sure that we're keeping our hand on the, the pulse of what's going on. So if, if it really starts to diminish down, um, we may end up at a point where we just, it's just not feasible to run the program anymore. Um, so I'll make sure I'm sending emails out, letting everyone know that what our participation rates are. Okay. Matt, are, are there still um, any sort of uh, communications that are, are being presented out to the community about the availability of the program? Um, yeah, it's, interestingly, we still have people who are contacting us and asking if we're doing a food program, which um, uh, I was a little surprised by. I thought we had reached just about everybody. Um, so we uh, will probably start uh, with, with this. We you know, appreciate the approval to, to keep going with this. We'll send out another round just to make sure that folks know that, because I mean, there's, there's going to be new people that are falling you know, into right. this um, you know, food insecurity situation. And we want to make sure they understand that the program's there. Right, yeah. But I was thinking the same thing. I mean, with the unemployment rate that, that spiked, I'm sure many of those people were employed at the time and it wasn't a hardship for them. Yeah, that, that's kind of a second round of surprise that I didn't expect to come along was mm -hmm. the, you know, another round of unemployment for folks. So yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll put together communication, uh, send it out again through, through through our channels, and then I'll work with Mike um, to get it out through the town's channels as well so we can reach people that maybe don't have children and aren't within our contact capability. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for all your you. work done, Matt. And the feedback. I appreciate the feedback. Um, hey, hey, Brad, but before we move yes. on, can I ask one question to Mike real quick? Certainly. Uh, Mike, with the uh, cover to kindness, are, are they still doing extended day or yeah. additional days? They are. They're doing four days a month now instead of the two. Okay, is that available anywhere? Like, I was on their website, I didn't see that noted. How's that um, information getting out? Yeah, I don't know. I'll have, I'll check their website, check with them. Okay, that would be great. And if we can somehow promote that, you know, whether on the board or social media, I think that would be helpful. Appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Grant? Um, yes. Um, yes, Mike. Just a couple more things. Um, yeah. Um, the town clerk uh, wanted me to uh, re thank downtown. They provide, without any notice, they provided pizzas for all the uh, election workers uh, on Saturday, and they were appreciative of that. And uh, just one other thing, uh, you know, there I know alert has gone out just to remind people. Um, in Norton, um, we didn't get the four and a half inches I got here in Holbrook of rain last Sunday. <laughs> um, so you notice the lawns are starting to brown and uh, unfortunately we're in a, a drought, drought situation right now. So the water and sewer department want everyone to remember they can only use a handheld hose. They don't want to be out there having to find people, but it's critical because the wells are, are cranking right now. And uh, if this continues a little, continues uh, on, you know, they will have to even stop the handheld hoses um, because right now we're about 14 inches down from where they should be for rain in Norton. So it's, uh, they just want to uh, make sure everyone's aware of that and, you know, helps out. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, just one, one point on water, Brad. Uh, yes. There was a post on one of the local town groups today uh, showing the high school football field being watered, um, implying that the schools were not following the, the town ordinance. 
uh, just to clarify, they are on their own uh, in-ground well system. They do not draw from yeah. the tap water at all. So there is not an issue there, and they are trying to get the field ready for town meeting on yeah. Saturday, as well as graduation on some on uh, in July. So uh, I know people like to stir the pot a little bit, but this one. And take the spoon out and just let it go. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything to add? I don't think it's we can not. make that, that spoon out analogy. No, that, was, that was a good one. Okay, we'll uh, move on to uh, Selectman's report and mail. Does anyone have anything? I'll, uh, uh, Jack, you're on my screen, so I'll ask you first. Uh, I would just like to formally welcome uh, Michael Toole to the board. Um, the first inaugural meeting of the select board, as approved by the voters this week. And a uh, pleasure to have you on, Michael. Um, you have some um, some big high-heeled shoes to fill uh, with Mary and <laughs> Peter, but I... Uh, Please don't uh, wear them. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, it's good, good to have you on board. I don't know how to respond to the high yield comment, but I'll, uh, I'll try to fill our high yield shoes the best I can. <laughs> we don't need injuries. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything? Uh, Fred, I, yeah, yes, Fred, I'd like to say the same. You know, welcome to Michael. Um, he did it, quite a bit of work throughout his campaign, and, uh, you know, it, it certainly paid off for him. So, Michael, welcome to the board. Um, he and I have been working together as, as part of the uh, newly named EDC as well. Um, so I look forward to his contributions here and, and uh, partnership as we, we continue to move forward. Um, and if, I mean, if you need a pair of high heels tomorrow, you, you know, feel free, <laughs> I'll, I'll lend you them too. Um, okay, yeah, <laughs> they're nice shoes though. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to mention, I don't know if, because uh, I was going through my email on this. Um, you guys remember when we talked about the employee recognition and we had said that we were going to recognize those employees with service, um, like they, I think we, we said like 5, 10, 15 and, and above years um, for both 2019 and then those coming up in 2020 and we were going to do that the, the spring meeting. Um, I, I haven't heard anything on that and the fact that we're going to have or we're encouraging less uh, participation and attendance, um, I'm wondering if if we can move that to, you know, the, the fall town meeting. And Mike, I don't know if, if it's been prepared or not. I mean, if, if you want to comment on that. No, I think you're right. Um, definitely uh, should hold off on that. Brad, were you going to say something? No, I was, it, it didn't look like Mike was, I didn't know if he was muted or not. I was just trying um, to. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Yeah, we. My internet's <laughs> my internet's going in and out. I know Jen has prepared uh, that, but you, we should really hold off until another town meeting. Yeah, we we're trying to keep down the attendance and make it a speedy meeting, and it'd be better if we hold it, uh, recognize people when we have a meeting, hopefully with more attendance attending uh, townspeople. Is there any, anything else under Selectman's report and mail? Well, I just wanted to, um, if I can just um, thank uh, Robert uh, Whitfield and Todd Bramwell for their service to the town, as well as uh, Matt's team for providing basic necessities during this hot time for many people in the town. So a lot of great things going on in the town. So I'm, I'm excited to be uh, part of this board and looking forward to uh, serving the town as, as well. Thank you very much, Mike. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll move on to warrants and minutes. And I'd like to report that I have um, authorized the payroll warrant PR 20-26 for the week ended June 13, 2020, warrant dated June 18, 2020, in the amount of four million. Four hundred and forty five four hundred and forty five thousand two hundred and ninety eight dollars uh, four hundred let me start it again, see if I can get it right. <laughs> you want Jack to read this again for you? No, no I can get this. A lot of people are gonna be upset that it's only four hundred thousand, by the way. <laughs> it's 
$4,445,498.35. There are 24s in that. Um, also, invoice warrant AP 20 51 dated June 18, 2020, in the amount of $1,166,700. Dollars and seventy nine cents, and invoice warrant AP twenty dash fifty two, dated June twenty fifth two thousand twenty, in the amount of eight hundred eighty nine thousand five hundred and thirty nine dollars and forty three cents, and as a comment, I think if I remember rightly, the uh, first payroll warrant. Was rather large, but I believe it's the uh, school personnel can take their summer pay in the last payment of the uh, June, and that swelled the uh, the payment the uh, payroll warrant. So those are the warrants I approved. We moved on. Move on to the approval of minutes. Our, any minutes in, in our list ready to be approved? Can we ask Mike's dog that question? I just saw the <laughs> head pop up there. She got in here. <laughs> um, the, I haven't seen, did, is Jen on the line? I'm here. Jen, I, I haven't seen the, the revised October 17th. Did you send that out or complete those? I completed them. I was just going over them one more time. I can send them out probably tomorrow. If not, it'll probably be Monday. That's okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's Brett. I mentioned it generally because Brett, that's the uh, that's the last one that I've been through. Um, so the others I would would have to ask again for us to review them at the next meeting. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, next meeting would be uh, July 9th. and. Uh, Anybody has anything other than minutes to review, let Mike know, and he can put it on the warrant. Um, under the executive session, I received a, uh, a text from Mr. Units that uh, there uh, is nothing to discuss in the executive session tonight, so we will not have an executive session. So. Uh, in that case, Chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Brad. Yes, Peter. Um, I, um, have you heard about the um, the, the Dunkin' Donuts that have drive throughs in Norton, but the one on Freeman Street doesn't have a drive through and I just heard from Taylor Skindle that the Dunkin' on West Main Street is closing and they have moved the employees at the West Main Street Dunkin' Donuts to a location that they were sad when they heard the news and and that spot was doomed when the planning board refused to put in a drive through at the Freeman Street Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, thank you, Peter. Yep. Yeah. Mike, have, have you heard um, confirmation of that? That that. I have not heard that anything. Supposed? That's the first I've heard of that. Yeah, and I know they've been closed during the pandemic, and I yep. think it was just because of the lack of the drive up. Right. Is, it, is that something, Mike, that um, you can ask Paul to reach out to see yep. if that is the case? We'll touch base with the owner. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Peter. It's unfortunate uh, if that is the case, but I think Peter hit the nail on the head that yeah. without a drive through, it's, uh, it puts it in a very different category than other. Dunkin' Donuts and, and being successful. That's right. I, I used to frequent that Dunkin' Donuts a lot to get my coffee and my donuts, but there's still Dunkin' Donuts right next to me in your next door where I can get my coffee and my bagel. <laughs> well, well, on the uh, topic of businesses closing, um, we had yes. talked at the last meeting about drafting a note on behalf of the select board to uh, Roach Brothers corporate office, thanking them for all the support the local branch provided to the town over the years. Um, uh -huh. If 
If no one uh, has any objections, I'd like to take on drafting that and then circulate that to, to the five of uh, the four of you for a while. Certainly, it's fine with me. If you, if you, if you want to uh, draft it and, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you can have it at the uh, town hall and the desk for uh, where we sign documents. There are uh, uh, documents on the table that need uh, selectman signatures anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, thanks. Um, so uh, that brings a good point for onboarding uh, Michael. Uh, we'll need to get him a badge and a key and go through the process. I'm sure, I'm sure that Mr. Ewens will take care of that. He's well ahead of the game. He's well ahead of the game. He gave it to me yesterday. Yeah. I kind of knew that because I was down there today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, if you can take care of that, that'd be great, Jack. Absolutely. And Thank just, you. Just Thank you so much, Jack. You just kind of send us a text to let me know when it's down there. Uh, when I go through, I'll make sure I sign it. Um, hey, hey, Brad, speaking of that pile, is there is there quite a bit or anything that's time sensitive that needs a signature? I don't, Mr. Yunus, is there anything that's, I know I signed a lot of documents today. Is there anything that you need out immediately? Um, I'll check tomorrow and uh, email everybody. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess one last question. This is the meeting. Yes. Brand. Uh, when is Town Hall reopening to the public, or is it already? Um, that is something, that's something we should uh, talk about at the July 9th meeting okay. um, and see, you know, maybe a gradual plan, uh, more appointments allowed, and then gradually open. But let's talk and put it on the agenda for July 9th. And maybe, Mr. Yunus, if you can get feedback from the different departments or, you know, how they feel comfortable with the opening. And, and Mike, do you have, uh, Peter, would you mind muting yourself if you're not speaking? Thank you so much. Uh, Mike, have you had a lot of employees who have um, who've opted to work more remotely as, as the as the reopening process happens um, just because of the high risk and of, of themselves or others? Um, no one that has uh, indicated that, um, just people that are having trouble with um, daycare okay. right now. Um, but other than that, um, people are still, most are coming in, and some people will work part in the office and part up, but still. Uh, the Board of Health, you can't have everyone in there at the same time. It's too small for the four of them, so they stagger um working from home while working in the office but no one has said they're not comfortable coming in okay thank you yep uh i guess one one last thing i see we have a few other non-town folks online um uh, mr chairman do you think we could ask if anyone has any anything they'd like to say or bring up before we close regarding uh I, I don't know. I just, I think if people have sat through the two hours or so of the meeting, if they had something that they wanted to share or ask, um, and we ask and see if there's anything on their mind. As hey, I asked Zach. Them. Hey, Zach. How are you? A um, couple things. I caught some of the uh, food program you guys were talking about. Um, I think it's a great thing they're doing, um, but I think the COVID thing has exposed a deeper issue uh, that you see a lot of seniors and a lot of uh, people going to that that really are affected by COVID, but I think have always been in our society. And this, I think it's a need uh, far beyond this COVID situation. I think it's exposed it, but uh, even right now, you just have a flood of uh, federal money and unemployment plus 600. I have friends that are earning more money than they were working. Um, and, you know, everybody get government checks, but. I think long term, you know, I'm not sure the town itself can solve it, but I think there's a need within the town that, you know, far beyond uh, uh, COVID. But that's the only thing I would add to that. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have something they want to share with us? 
If not, Chair, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mike. Aye. Renee. Yes. Jack. Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.